Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose. Mm-hmm in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today, I'm gonna show you just how easily you can take that old shed that maybe you've had for years and years and give it a makeover. As most of you all know, I've been doing a lot of DIYing around my house and I have a couple of sheds that have been here for about 15 to 17 years. And so they've seen their day, they've been worn out, they are dirty, they're old. And well, I feel like I need to give them a makeover. And that's just one of many things that I've been doing around the house, just trying to make this house my own. Allie, Kayla and I is now taking it from the family home to our home on our new journey in this new chapter of our lives that we're on. The shed that I'm making over today is a shed that I am using for all of my yard tools. And there really is no rhyme or reason to it. There are a couple shelves in there, but there is no real way to organize and see what I have. It's all just kind of in there. And as it served its purpose like that for 17 years, it is not going to be that way anymore. I am going to organize this. I wanna see what I have, where it's at, and I want it to be easily accessible. And I wanna make this shed something that isn't such an eyesore when I go out to my side yard. And so you'll see what I mean by that in just a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let me show you how easily you can make over your shed that you've had for years and years and make it look new again. Let's get to it. So if I'm being honest, it wasn't until after I started emptying out the shed that I decided to do an old shed makeover. And so this is all of the stuff that came out of that shed there. As you can see, we are staring at the floor of the shed. Now, I feel like the floor of the shed tells more of its age than the outside of it. And so, yeah, looking at this, I knew it needed to be cleaned and I was not okay leaving it this way. I did pressure wash it and after pressure washing it, there wasn't much of a difference. There was a lot of staining. And so, yeah, I guess what I did, I went for it. I decided that this shed flooring definitely needed a coating of paint and the paint I'm using is the same paint that I used for my garage floor. I figured if it was good enough for my garage floor, why wouldn't it be good enough for the shed? In full disclosure though, my shed is not floor, patio, or porch. It doesn't fall in any of those categories because it is kind of a rubber base but has that ever stopped me before from using a product for something other than its intended use? Absolutely not. It is adhering to this flooring, and so I'm just gonna go with it. I did power wash this flooring, and you can still see that it just didn't come clean, and I wanted it to look clean. So using one of Dollar Tree's paint brushes, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut in and I'm gonna start off with just one, I'm only doing one coat, I'm not doing two because this isn't gonna be exposed to the elements daily. And so I feel like because it's protected, I can get away with just one coat. And so once I've got that first coat on, oh wait, before I jump into that, let me show you or give you a close up of the paint that I'm using for this in case you too wanna paint your shed floor. This here is the paint that I am using. Like I said, it's Valspar porch floor patio intended use for wood and concrete. Oh, we're not using either of those. I'm using a dark gray. This comes stock at Lowe's in dark gray and light gray. You can also get it in any color you'd like. I like this because it is a latex satin finish and so it gives you a nice, clean, smooth, looking finish without any of those brush strokes or 
roll on strokes, I guess. Once I've put my coat on, my first coat, second coat, whatever it is, I am gonna go in with some of Rust-Oleum's paint chips. These paint chips come in, I wanna say, several different colors. I like the Glacier Gray. It's got the black, grays, and whites in it. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this over the top of my gray paint while it's wet, in turn, yes, adhering those paint chips to the floor. It's a pretty easy process. And this is the same process that I used when doing my garage floor, and it turned out amazing. So I will tell you though, the benefit of using this paint versus, I would say, an epoxy flooring is that it, one, cost a fraction of the cost. You're gonna pay $30 a can for this, and it took me three cans to do my garage when epoxy cost about $100 a kit, and it would have taken me three kits to do my garage, so that would have cost me $300. But by using this paint, it only cost me $90, plus the cost of two bags of paint chips, so we are at 120 and this only takes a day to dry to wear epoxy. It can take anywhere from three days to a couple of weeks to cure. My neighbor did his garage this spring and it took three weeks for his epoxy to cure. Now, it could be the climate and the elements, but there again, this paint, I love it. It works great for what I'm using it for and so I highly recommend it. And like I said, I'm only doing one coat on my shed. If in a couple years I need to add another coat, I will, but it's not anything that's gonna see some high traffic. And the area that will see high traffic, I am going to add an outdoor throw carpet to. For those of you who haven't seen, here is a quick peek at my garage before and after. Now with the garage, I did do two to three coats of this paint before adding the paint chips because it is a higher traffic area to where again with this shed not so much traffic but more of storage would you look at how clean that looks ah, so satisfying something about things being clean and being able to keep them clean is very satisfying wouldn't you say these are an item at dollar tree you're most definitely going to want to keep your eye open for these garden tool hangers oh my word Picked up a couple of them in a haul a few weeks ago that I did. Wasn't quite sure how I was gonna use them, but they looked like something handy that I might be able to use that I put in my stash. It wasn't until I decided to organize my shed or make over my shed that I realized these would be perfect to hang those small hand gardening tools that I got from Dollar Tree. I've got a couple from Pioneer Woman. They would be perfect to hang up on that back wall of my shed. Now, when hanging these hangers up, I did it knowing or thinking that the screws were probably going to go through the shed and they would show on the outside of the shed. But I wasn't super worried about it because that back wall of the shed goes up against my house so nobody would see it. I went ahead, I put on or I attached four to the back then went out to look to see how bad the screws look and if they were really sticking out a lot when I realized that they weren't sticking out at all because there was two panes of plastic on the shed walls, which was a win-win because now the screws weren't showing. And so I was really worried thinking that I wouldn't be able to utilize the sides of the inside of the shed to hang up more of my tools because I didn't want obviously the screws hanging out or sticking out from the outside of the shed. And so knowing this opened up a whole new level of excitement for me, knowing that I could really organize this shed the way I wanted to using several items from Dollar Tree which are available to you. Now that they're $1.25, I understand that some people may be opposed to it, but still, for some of these items, $1.25 is still a win-win. It's still cheaper than some of the items you would get at, say, Walmart for organizing your shed. 
I had only picked up five of these hangers, wishing I would have picked up a sixth one because there is room on the end there for one more. But would you look at how cool these hangers are to hang these hand garden tools from? Each of these hangers has a hook in the middle. And so that's always good too, because you can hang your gloves from it, or you can hang something like these shears from it. And so, yeah, this is awesome because I can see what hand tools I need, grab the one. I'm not digging through a pile or a drawer or a bin. Such satisfaction in that. I love that. I can see them all. I think I need more of those hooks. I'd say with most projects, I start out with the intent of doing something little. And so like with this, it really was just wanting to organize the tools. And it started out as, hey, I'm just gonna use these Dollar Tree hangers to organize these tools. And once I got in there and I looked down at the floor, I thought, oh my word, no, that has to change. We need to clean that up. Then I look at everything else and before I know it, the list and the project has grown and now I have a to-do list on this project that I didn't anticipate, but I will tell you that most of my projects around the house have kind of turned out that way. They kind of take on a life of their own once I get started. Does that happen for you too? Or is it just me? I think it happens for most of us. And so yes, this would be an example of one of those things that was not on the list of things to do for this shed, but kind of became one of the things that I needed to do. And that was lining the shelves that were in the shed. Now those shelves were, I wanna say Jeff built those. And so I decided to keep them because it added to the storage. I could store more and they were a good idea. I'll give them that but they weren't painted and they weren't lined. There was a lot of raw wood and so that there became another project was I decided to paint the shelves and I painted it using a paint that I had on hand already that I used for the outside of the sheds, but you'll see that in a minute. I didn't have a lot of paint left and so I did the areas that you would see and that left the tops of them still raw wood. And so I decided that the best route to go would be to use this easy liner, something that I can wipe down and clean, something that's no skid for whatever tools I put up there. They're not gonna slip around. And easy liner is one of my favorite things to line my shelves with. I did my whole house with this stuff, but I used the white. And I think I had a decorative one too. But since this is gonna be outside, I went ahead and picked up the beige roll and I picked up the extra, I guess the mega roll. And this is about $16 for a mega roll and it's huge. And so yeah, I decided that the shelves were gonna be lined with just that. And I am using a rotary cutter and a ruler to cut it so I have nice clean lines and I'm not wasting any of this liner. I will say yes, my floor is painted. This was one of the projects that I just did recently because I don't like dirt. I don't like stains. I like cleanliness. This would be an example of my OCD going into overdrive. And so I did paint the RV access. As you can tell, well, it's not an RV access anymore because there's no RV. So we're just gonna call it the side yard now, the utility side of the house. Now these are the shelves that were once, or this is one of the two shelves that was in the shed before that wasn't painted, but is now uh, halfway painted, I guess, to what's visible to the eye. Like I said, only because I didn't have enough paint, I didn't want to invest in more paint, and I just kind of wanted it to look neat and finished. Although it's not, it's going to look that way. See, looks can be deceiving, ha. So when applying the easy liner to the shelves, I really wanted them to stay put. So I am using my staple gun 
to keep the easy liner shelf liner in place. I think that it's just gonna be easier that way so when I'm pulling things on and off the shelf, I don't have to worry about that moving. And it's gonna make it easier because it's gonna be stationary, it's gonna be stuck to the shelf, so when I wanna clean it, I can easily just spray my spray cleaner on there and wipe it down with a paper towel. And yeah, it's gonna be mess free, which is amazing. That really is my goal with everything, is just to be able to keep it clean. And yeah, wood is hard to do that with. And so unless you stain it, and that's just, no, we're not doing that, we're doing this right now. That's how I'm doing this, and this shelf liner is going to work perfect. I'm keeping this shed strictly for the yards. Everything needed for yard and gardening is gonna be in this shed. And with that being said, I had quite a few yard tools because I do have two larger yards that I need to maintain and I don't pay a landscaper. And so before in this shed, these shovels, rakes, and brooms were all just kind of piled up into a corner leaning up against the wall of the shed. And it kind of gave me anxiety seeing it because I couldn't really see what I had and what I needed. So I went to Dollar Tree, picked up these amazing hooks. These are a universal tool hook. You're getting five in a pack. It's by Toolbench. These come with the screws as well. These are great and I never really knew how great they were until I started organizing my garage. And I'll just tell you now, I was hanging everything from these hooks because they are glorious. Everything from our snowboarding bags that hold our gear. Kayla, Allie, and I each had a bag. Didn't want those stored in the house. Our snowboarding helmets. And Allie's got a scootering helmet for around the neighborhood. Worked perfectly for these. The best part, my roof racks for my snowboards. Oh my word, such a quick, easy solution to how I was gonna store these this year. And of course, you gotta organize the stool and the dog bag and all that fun stuff and it worked perfect for those too. So I knew that these tool hooks were just what I needed for the inside of my shed to hang my shovels, my rakes, and my brooms from and they worked perfectly for just that. This was my favorite part of doing this shed was organizing these tools because it kind of felt like putting a puzzle together, just making sure all those pieces fit just right, utilizing as much of the shed wall space as I could. And so I was very mindful of the amount of weight that I was putting on the walls of the shed. I was careful not to put too much and kind of distribute the weight between the two walls that I had. And so yeah, it worked out perfectly and these hooks were perfect for all of these gardening tools. Yeah. Okay, on the door, I used the self-adhesive hangers. And this is the new Cooper Scooper for Winnie. And, and this is how Everything is hung. Sorry about the wind, everybody. But yes, I used all of these hooks from Dollar Tree and just by placing the shovels or the rakes where I wanted them, I knew where I would need to put the hook based on where it was gonna hang off of each given item. So it wasn't like I could put the hooks all in the same place, if that makes any sense. And so, yeah, that is my wall of yard tools and we've got the hangers there from Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness, this is so satisfying for me. And my power tools here. This is my new uh, pole saw. I've got a couple trees that I need to shape. So yeah, I'm going to do that here pretty quick. And honestly, all the tools that I get are either hyper tough at Walmart because I wanted everything to be cordless. I didn't want electric or gas. I like having the batteries. And then once you buy one or two of the cordless tools, you might as well, you're in it. So you might as well just stick with it. So all the batteries are interchangeable and you don't have different batteries for each power tool. 
Although um, I did go with the Portland for the chainsaw because this was $60 cheaper at Harbor Freight than the Hyper Tough chainsaw. And so, but this is not cordless. This is electric. So that's okay. And so, yeah, I've got my bug spray. I've got my sealant, my miter saw, some extra water bottles. I hung up everything over here, just like so, except for this broom. I use this a lot, so I just leaned it up against there. You can tell that's one of my favorites. And so, yes. And then here I've got more of the adhesive hangers. And these are just regular um, poles with nothing on them from Dollar Tree because these are great for attaching to rollers when you're painting. And so I like to keep a couple on hand just in case I need them. And so, yeah, and that is it. Look at how pretty and nice that looks now. And I finished it off with a Walmart Mainstays Titan Gray rug, one of their cheap outdoor rugs. And so, yeah, I couldn't be happier. I love the way the floor looks. And so I will say it is clean, it is neat, it is organized, and it is perfect for me. It's going to do everything that I wanted it to do and then some. When I started this project out, I didn't expect it to look this great inside. But now that the inside is done, I feel like I need to address the outside. Some may say, what's wrong with this shed? It looks fine. It does look fine, but when you have two or three sheds and they're all different colors, you've got a hodgepodge of sheds going on, something needs to be done because it, it does. It makes my OCD go into overdrive seeing all the different colors. So I decided that I was going to paint all of my sheds with that can of paint that I found in my garage. It was an exterior paint, not sure what it was for, but it was this beige tone. My guess is that it was probably made, oh my goodness, that's a Biza, everybody. I just want you to know. That's my son's dog. He's a Labradoodle too. And there goes Winnie. She's like, hey, don't pet him and not me. Yes, they are just the cutest stinking things. People say I have big dogs. I don't feel like they're big. They are just big muffins to me. I just, they're just my favorite things to snuggle and cuddle with. Anyway. Okay, doggies, I gotta get back to work. Oh, look at his face. It's so hard to concentrate when they're in the picture because they are so cute. They have the best personalities. He has such a gentle nature. Oh, what a good boy. Okay, so anyway, so my guess is that this paint was maybe mixed with trying to match our house. The stucco of our house, you can see right there, it does not match it at all. So I don't really know what this went to because there is nothing this color in my house, but I have a full gallon of it. And so I didn't wanna throw it away. And since I had a full gallon, I knew that I could paint three sheds with it and make all three of my sheds match. But in doing that, I knew that one can wasn't gonna be enough for all three. And since I had a can of this and a can of dark brown paint, I decided to do the sheds two tones, that I would do the walls of the sheds, this tan, and then go in with the dark brown and do the doors and the roof in the brown. And really this shed, if I'm being honest, I hand brushed this on and I know somebody's gonna say I'm a nerd. It took me eight minutes per panel. There were three panels on this side. It literally took me a half an hour to paint one side of this. I didn't paint the other side except for probably an eighth of the way down because my wall is covering it. And so yeah, it really didn't take me all but an hour, I want to say, to paint this whole shed with the two tones that I used. So it was worth the effort and the time of doing it because the outcome, oh my word, let me just show you. And here is the before and after. I am loving the color change. Now, like I said before, I know that this shed was not bad color-wise, but when you've got a couple of sheds that are right next to each other and they're both different colors up against the house with a fence that's brown, it, it just, it's too much for my OCD to handle. And so I went ahead and painted them both. 
This larger shed was a mixture of a gray and a blue that had been oxidized and de discolored, I guess, because it had been there for 17 years. But I am so happy now because although they are two different sheds, the colors match and it looks amazing. They look clean and new and I couldn't be happier. This shed makeover, if I calculate in cost of paint, cost me under $50 to do. Being organized and decluttering feels great. And I feel like while you're organizing and you're decluttering and you're cleaning things, making them look new again, putting them or making them in a way that you can keep them clean, I feel like it it takes a pressure off or an anxiety away. And I am somebody who is and gets very anxious when things aren't just so. It's how I've always been. I am a perfectionist and I like things to be clean. I like things to be organized. I like things to have a place. And I feel like once they are clean, organized, and they have their place, if you always just put things back where they belong, things don't get cluttered again or disorganized. And that is something that I try so hard to instill into my kids is to take pride in ownership. It doesn't have to be something big and expensive that you're taking pride in when you own it and trying to get the most life out of it so it'll last you longer. It, it can really be anything as simple as a shed or the tools that are going in the shed. And so over this last year, I've had to, I guess, invest in tools because that was something that went with Jeff when he left. And so I really didn't have any of the tools that were needed to maintain this house. And so I have been collecting them over this last year. And as I have been collecting them, I have found that I needed them to be organized. I needed everything to have a place. And I feel like by doing what I did to the shed today, that it is doing just that. One shed down, one more to go. And I tell you, I am on my way to a cleaner, neater, more organized life and that is so satisfying. I hope you all enjoyed today's shed, old shed makeover. Even though it didn't look like it, it really was old. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy everything on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. Stay positive, please, because I am.